and let's go ahead and start. It's all you, Priscilla. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Eileen. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my presentation. Can you all see it? Thumbs up. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, it's just loading. Okay, so hello and welcome. In Spanish, it's hola y bienvenidos. So we're so happy that you can all join us today in the Spanish language hour. Um, by a show of hands or just a thumbs up or in the chat, how many of you have some experience with Spanish? <clears throat> From Jenna, you have experience? Okay. Do you, would you guys say that you're intermediate, beginner, advanced? I'd say around intermediate for me. Okay, okay, that's good. All right, awesome. So it should be fairly easy today then. Um, so we're gonna go ahead. So Guinness Somos, who are we? We're a Spanish association club on campus. We were founded in April 29, 2000. And we, at the beginning, we used to be a, mainly a Spanish club for Spanish majors, um, but we moved to all the modern language, languages and as well as different departments on our campus. Um, you will benefit from this club if you are a member by participating in activities or becoming an executive member, a board member, um, and so on. So Gen Edis, who are you? So this is me. Um, in Spanish, you'll say, introduce yourself like, hola, yo soy Priscila, y tú? Um, this is the basic in anywhere you go. If you go to Mexico, if you go to Spain, go to Argentina, Guatemala, um, you introduce yourself in this way. So our first activity will be an introduction activity. Um, and here I have a little structured um, structured conversation. So in blue, I will be like, hola, como te llamas? And then someone in the participants will say their, will say the one in pink. So hola, yo me llamo. And then for example, Jenna. And then Jenna would say, y tú? So um, we could go ahead and get started with that. Does anyone want to, I guess, volunteer first? Sure, I can go. Okay, thank you. So I'll do the blue part and then you'll do the pink part, okay? Okay. Okay. Hola, como te llamas? Hola, yo me la, yo me llamo. Uh, the double L is pronounced as a Y, so llamo. Llamo. Mm -hmm. Hola, Perfect. yo me llamo. And then you say your name. Ah, yo me llamo Tejas. Tejas, okay. And then you say, y tú? Y tú? And then I will say, yo me llamo Priscila. And then you'll say the pink part. Encantado al de conocerte. Yes. So you would say encantado since you're a, a male. You would say the, I guess the nouns ending with O. Um, a female would say encantada since that's the female noun. Um, and then I would say igualmente. Does anyone else want to practice? Maybe we could have two other people do it. I can do it with someone. Okay, um, Jenna and anyone else? I'll do it. All right, thank you. So one of you will be blue and one of you will be pink. Uh, I'll be blue. Okay. Uh, hola, ¿cómo te llamas? Hola, yo me llamo Jenna. ¿Y tú? Yo me llamo Miguel. Encantada de conocerte. Igualmente. Okay, awesome. Um, anyone else, Madeline or any of our other participants? Jennifer, Ashley. Okay. I can participate. Okay. Um, what, uh, do I say the blue or the, the pink? Yeah, you can say the blue. Okay. Um, Hola, ¿cómo te llamas? Hola, yo me llamo Priscila. ¿Y tú? Yo me llamo Jennifer. Encantada de conocerte. Igualmente. 
Okay. Um, so I know Jenna. Yes, Jenna, go ahead. Is it okay if I say me llamo or does it have to be yo me llamo? Um, yeah, you could say me llamo Jenna. Um, I guess yo y me is kind of repetitive, but to get a sense of the Spanish language, I guess um, this is a good start for people that are learning. Okay. Um, yeah. And then Eileen, if you wanna go ahead and admit more people. Okay, thank you. Um, so for those of you that entered our first activity, we're doing an introduction of ourselves. So would any of you like to um, practice this conversation? If not, it's totally fine. Okay. I can go. Okay, all right. So Fernando, I will do the blue part and you'll do the pink part, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, hola, ¿cómo te llamas? Hola, yo me llamo Fernando, ¿y tú? Yo me llamo Priscila. Encantado de conocerte. Igualmente. All right, um, sorry for the background noise. Okay, so thank you everyone for participating in this, our first activity. Um, for those of you that entered, so Fernando and I believe Diego, would you say you have a advanced background, intermediate or beginner level background of Spanish? And you can write your response in the chat. Okay, um, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next part. So my next question is, ¿Por qué quieres aprender español? So translated into English is, why do you want to learn Spanish? So I know some of you are here because you're interested in studying abroad in one of the Spanish speaking countries, such as Spain, Mexico, Chile, um, you know, anywhere else in Latin America. Um, I know some people, they have told me that they wanna, they wanna learn Spanish to order, you know, Latin and Hispanic food in the restaurants. Um, other people have told me that it's perfect for resumes, um, you know, added to your job skills. Other people have also said that they love the language and the culture. And then other people say that they learn language because they could brag about it in the future. So um, does anyone want to say why they're learning Spanish? And you can use one of the, the sentence starters that I have right there. So the first one is para viajar, so travel. The second one is ordenar comida latina o hispana, so order Latin Hispanic food. The third one is habilidades de trabajo, job skills. And then the fourth one is amo el lenguaje y las culturas. So I love the language and the culture. And the fifth one is los derechos de fanforianar. So bragging rights. So um, if you could just unmute yourself and say why you want to learn Spanish or. Um, I guess that it would be the third one for me. Habilidad de trabajo. Okay, awesome. Anyone else? For me, I'd say probably all of them. No, oh, that's good. That's good. For me, I would say it's para viajar because I actually twice have led two study abroad programs to Spanish speaking countries. And I'm always learning little by little, but I don't, I've never taken like formal classes, but it always helps to know <laughs> when I'm working. I've gone to Cuba and I've gone to Mexico with students and I try to practice, practice and brush up every time I'm about to go somewhere with students. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I know for me, when I was, I've come from a Spanish speaking family, but my, both of my parents are from Mexico. So kind of growing up, it was, you know, implied that I learned Spanish anyways, but I didn't really practice the pronunciation of the words until I got to high school. So, um, and now I'm majoring in Spanish. So that's how I know more than what I would have known before. Does anyone else want to share why they're learning Spanish? 
Well, my name is Tejas. It's pronounced Tejas, but everyone here calls me Tejas. I've even been called Texas a couple of times. <laughs> so I guess I just, you know, skid into the curve, learn Spanish, and, and make the best use out of that. Well, that's, yeah, that's funny. When I noticed your name pop up, I was like, Tejas, it was like Texas, you know, Texas State. Um, that's really funny that, is that like your parents named you after a, something oh, in Spanish? Tejas, and this, I'm actually from India. So Tejas oh, okay. actually means fast. One oh, definition okay. of it is fast. Oh, wow, that's really cool how there's like a, a cultural exchange between the languages. <laughs> Yes, but I don't think it was intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and Jenna's also a Spanish major, and Jennifer and Madeline as well. Um, so thank you everyone for sharing on why you want to learn Spanish. Um, now we're gonna move on to the next activity or the next section. So it's pretty, for most people, it's pretty obvious since we live in California where people come from that speak Spanish. And since we're right at the border with Mexico, a majority of our Spanish speaking neighbors come from Mexico. Um, so our question is, donde se habla español? So where do they speak Spanish? Does anyone wanna name a couple of countries or countries that they travel to or where they wanna travel to? And you can say it in Spanish as well. Uh, yo quiero viajar a Honduras. Okay. Um, an example for me would be yo quiero viajar a España. So I've never been to Spain yet, um, but I've been to a couple of South American countries and as well as Central American countries. Um, so I've been to, well, I don't want to list them because then it will just give away the answer. I'll list them afterwards. Uh, yo quiero viajar a Peru. Okay, nice. Madeline, dijo que, Madeline said, España, Panama, y Costa Rica. Anyone else? Yo quiero viajar a España. Nice, nice, yes. Jenna, do you have a preference of where you want to travel to? Uh, no, I just want to go Latin America in general. No, it's every country. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess I'll tell you where I've been to. Um, so I've been to... Colombia, Panama, Mexico, since it's my parents' um, home, home country. I've also been to Bolivia, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay. And I was going to go to the Dominican Republic for a study abroad trip, but it did get canceled because of the pandemic. Um, so yeah, so here we have a list or maps of where Spanish is spoken. And in the United States, the most commonly spoken language other than English is Spanish. So California is up there. Um, you know, you have Nevada, Washington, Colorado, Texas, Florida, you know. And there's lots of countries. So if you're interested in studying abroad in a Spanish speaking country, you have a variety of options. And I know the study abroad office also has um, options to Chile, Spain, and they have service learning in the Dominican Republic and service learning in Cuba. Um, so yeah, so let's move on to the next activity. <clears throat> so activity number two. This one, this question is, ¿Qué comidas, celebraciones y lugares conoces? So what food celebrations and places do you recognize? Um, so this is going to be like a little game. I'm not sure if we could do like breakout rooms, Eileen, like a competition. Yeah, we can if you'd like to. Um, how would you like to do that? 
like uh, how um, how many in the breakout <clears throat> room? And um, do you need anything like questions sent to them ahead of time? Maybe if you give us the instructions first, I can figure out how to do the. Breakout. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna match the words to the the picture. So here I have a list of words um, from many of the Spanish speaking countries. So some of them you may recognize, some of them you may not recognize. And that's totally fine because this is um, International Night Education Week and we are learning. So we have churros, Dia de los Muertos, Feria de las Flores, Au, Nau, Nau, La Sagrada Familia, Empañadas, Carnaval Dominicano, Conchas y Tamales. So on the list, there's food, um, festivals that are, that are celebrated, in many of the Latin American countries, and then as well as, um, you know, famous places. Okay. And here are the images. I have a, I mean, I have a Google Doc with um, all this information. I could just share it. In the chat? Yeah, yes. go ahead and put it in the chat, and then I'll put <laughs> them in the breakout rooms because they might not see this once they're in the rooms. And then how many do you want in each room? Um, let me just stop share real quick, okay. Um, there's 11, so maybe five and five in each. Okay, perfect. So I'll break it up into two rooms, okay? Yes. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do it. Okay. Let me go ahead and get the, the link to it. Okay. All right, so once I see it, once you post it, uh, oh, once I see it, I'll um, put you all in your rooms. Oh, did you put it in the chat? No, not yet. Right now I'm doing oh, it. Gotcha. And welcome, Lorena. I think this, is this everyone? Not yet. Uh, oh, okay. oh, actually, yeah, it looks like they're all back. Okay, um, so how was it? Was it fairly easily easy or did you guys find it difficult? Moderate, not too okay. easy, not too difficult. Mm -hmm. Did any of you recognize some of the words or? I did. Okay, that's good. I recognized tamales because a friend of mine gave me tamales to eat. Oh. Yes. Did you like them? Oh, they're different. I never had anything like tamales back home in India. So oh. I did enjoy them, but I didn't expect them to taste like that. Like some people like to eat it with the outer covering. Some people like to remove the outer covering. Well, that's really interesting. So are you... What kind of meat did they have? Uh, mine was chicken. I can't eat beef for religious reasons. So by general definition, I think it's beef, right? Most foods here have meat as beef. At some places, it might be you know, turkey, fish, chicken. I can have everything else other than beef. So I have been, you know, going around having some nice, going to some restaurants. I've been to Ensenadas, it's near the Denny's, close to the coast. I got some pretty nice uh, surf and turf food. I mean, I got fish tacos, they were delicious. Yeah, the fish tacos are delicious from there. So I know in our group, Tony, he knew a lot of the places that some of the other students didn't know. Um, so he was like, he was giving us facts about the places as well, which was really interesting. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my presentation again, and then we can go through the answer. <laughs> Can you all see it again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Just give it a sec to load. Okay, we already went through this. <laughs> okay. So I guess we'll start with the famous places. So las lugares famosas del mundo. So the famous places of the world. 
um, specifically to Spanish speaking countries. So if you want, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and say um, what you think the first image is on the left, the one with the, the cathedral. Uh, well, that's La Sagrada Familia. Uh, it's in Spain. Uh, and yes, as, as I said in the break room, um, it's one of the most wonderful places uh, to visit if you if you want to visit uh, Spain, I think. And it was considered uh, just for a little bit to be one of the seven wonders of the world, just that it didn't make the cut, but it's still really, really wonderful. Mm -hmm. And if it hasn't been finished, I think it, it it's lacking like a couple of years or uh, I think a decade to be finished because the, the architect of it is really, really complex. Yeah, so it's still under construction. So everything that Tony said was correct. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanna visit Spain is because of this cathedral. So I'm hoping they finish it by the time I go there, but if not, I could see it while it's under construction. So in Spanish, you would say, I would like to visit Spain to see the cathedral, La Sagrada Familia, you would say it. Yo me gustaría visitar España para ver la, el catedral de La Sagrada Familia. Okay, so does anyone know what the second image is? Uh, who knew uh, now, now? Yes, correct. And do you know where it is, Tony? Uh, yeah, it's in the Easter Island in Chile. Yes, that is correct. So it's on Easter Island in Chile. Um, so there's a lot of theory surrounding on how these statues were built, um, mostly because they are so big. And, you know, there's some say like, oh, aliens built it, or, um, you know, or the people, they have advanced technology and so on. So in the chat, we have someone saying something. Oh, that was just me saying that uh, oh. Island and um, visiting the statues are actually like really like high on my bucket list next. So mm -hmm. I do want to go there and see those. Okay, let me just close my door so the background sound is not too loud. Good, thank you, Priscilla. I feel Priscilla. I have a three-year-old that I had to have my husband watch. I'm like, I'm in a presentation right now. Go watch our son. So I, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, the siblings. <laughs> um, this pandemic has been, has brought many challenges. Okay, so let me move on to the next one. Diego in the chat said he would love to visit La Sagrada Familia. Yes. It would be really cool if CSUF, like the Spanish department, planned a, a trip to Spain to visit La Sagrada Familia. Well, let's tell them. <laughs> Get it started. Okay, so the next, um, the next, uh, I guess, quiz you can say is um, we're going to be naming these festivals from around the world. And then Fernando said, Paella looks so good. And then Diego said, yes, I would join. Yes. So paella is from Spain as well. Um, that's a type of dish, a uh, Spaniard dish um, in Spain. It has rice, you know, seafood like shrimp and clams and so forth. Okay, so uh, does anyone want to unmute their mic or write in the chat which one is this first image? The one with the butterfly and the circle um, decorations? That as well is the Festival de las Flores. Yes, that is correct. So that is the Fiera de las Flores. So the Festival of the Flowers, it's in Argentina. And um, one of my goals is also to go to this festival um, to see the decorations. It's kind of 
similar to one of the celebrations we have here in the United States, which is the, the Rose Parade. The wait, yeah, the Rose Parade, yes. <laughs> um, so that would be really interesting to go and see. Does anyone want to name the second image on the top? Or what their group came up with? I think it was um, the Carnaval Dominicano, if I remember correctly. Yes, that is correct. So this is Carnaval Dominicano. The, it's in the Dominican Republic and it happens in February. It's basically, um, you know, one of the more traditional celebrations. It it unites, you know, um, the Mexican, not the Mexican, the Dominican, the native Dominican and the African cultures together. And they kind of, you know, celebrate their unity. Okay, and then the last picture on the bottom, which I think if you live in California, you, anyone would know this. Dia de la Mota. Yep, that is correct. Dia de los Muertos. So as we know, we just celebrated Halloween, but Dia de los Muertos last for a couple of um, a couple of days, and it goes. It ends on November second. So it goes. Yeah, and Dia de los Muertos is basically a celebration of, you know, celebrating those who have died before us and to basically mem commemorate um, their lives. So yeah. And Dia de los Muertos is um, mostly celebrated in Mexico. Okay, and now to my favorite part, which is food. Um, does anyone want to name the first image? Tamales. Yes. So Tejas, I know you were talking about um, trying tamales. And for me, I, tamales are, they're like, um, I guess a luxury to have sometimes for me, just because we mostly eat tamales during the Christmas celebration. So um, la celebración de Navidad. So that's how you say Christmas in Spanish. And during um, Thanksgiving as well, we also have tamales. Okay, and then, um, can anyone name the second image that's on the top as well? Empanadas? Yes, that is correct. And, um, oops. <laughs> so the, um, empanadas are celebrated, I mean, are made in, um, you know, in a lot of Spanish speaking countries. You know, they originated in Spain as well as um, Portugal, but Portugal speaks Portuguese, um, but they also they're also in Mexico, in Argentina, in Uruguay. When I went to Uruguay, I had a um, I stayed with the family and they gave me Uruguayan Uruguayan um, empanadas and they were delicious. So every time I told them when I come back, I want a feast of all the empanadas. So yeah, um, someone said, oh Jenna says she needs to try one. Yes, you should definitely try one. Um, when if you get the chance. One fun thing too, Priscilla. There's actually empanadas from the Philippines too. So Philippine, like it's not considered. There's some Spanish words because we were also it's the, the Philippines was also colonized by the Spanish, yeah. and so but there's a lot of dishes like empanadas too in the Philippines. So there's some in Asia as well. Yeah. So that's yeah. The, you know the exchange of foods. You know, is a positive thing. Um, you know, you get stuff. Okay, and then this image on the bottom, does anyone have, does anyone know the name? You know, you could get them at Disneyland. Churros. Yes. And churros are, you know, a staple dessert anywhere you go. Um, and especially if they have chocolate filling or caramel filling or some type of filling inside. Um, I know every time I go to Mexico, we go down to the, the plaza, which is the, I guess the, the main center, the city center. And we always buy these churros. Um, someone wrote in the chat, Julia, <laughs> Eileen. She's over here drilling. That's okay. just me. <laughs> okay, and then this last picture, which is also a dessert. 
They're named after like seashells on the beach. Does anyone want to say the name? Conchas? Yes, that is correct. Um, and then conchas, I don't know if you've noticed, they look like, um, I guess the outer layer of the shells. So they were named after that, the shells on, on the beach. Um, conchas in English is literally seashell or shells. Um, so for this next activity, I want to, if you want, you can go ahead and share, um, I guess, what food you would like to try or what place you would like to go to or what festival you would like to attend. And in Spanish, it would be, for food that I want to try, it would be yo quiero comer conchas. So that means I would, I want to eat conchas. And then, um, so does anyone want to give it a try with food? And then I'll go ahead and write that, I guess that sen sentence structure in the chat. So you can have it. Uh, yo quiero comer empanadas. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, did I say yo quiero comer todos? Like, I want them all. Like, <laughs> <I'm now. laughs> they all sound, it's dinner time. So, all of you. Yeah. So, Eileen, you would say yo quiero comer todo. Yeah. So, you had it correct. Anyone else? Yo quiero comer 